Children, y'all are dismissed if y'all want to go. They're gone. All right. We've got a <clears throat> really an entire section we're going to go through. I kind of changed plans, or maybe God tried to help me change plans. Um, we're in the book of Genesis, and we're looking at the chapter 31. But before we go any further, let's pray. Father, I just want to lift up all those that are going through a battle now. For all those who are wrestling. It's a hard place to be, Father. But that's where we meet you. Not when life is easy. Not when the road is smooth. But we meet you when the battle is beyond our control. It's beyond us, Father. And Father, as we look inside your word, help us to preach. To hear. To learn. But most of all, to love. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, <clears throat> how many of y'all are familiar with Jacob and Esau? Okay. Um, just to give you a little bit of history. Uh, Jacob and Esau were the children of Isaac. Okay. Uh, Jacob and Esau were <sighs> twins. Uh, Esau, Esau, just to give you a picture of who he was, and you can all read this, and it starts in Genesis chapter 25 and goes through the end of 33, but it, 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 it's this amazing story. Um, you know, we kind of grew up with this idea that all these beautiful pictures in the scripture are just uh, easy, that there, there's no conflict, that, you know, we kind of get the idea when when we embrace faith that Everything gets easy from there. You know, they, you get saved and everything's perfect, right? Hard. Really? Temptation is. Yeah, you didn't have a problem with temptation before. You just gave in, right? I'm not judging you, Frank. <laughs> the story goes... Uh, as recorded in Genesis, um, Isaac has two boys. Um, they're born to Rachel. And one of the boys, uh, the second one born, Esau is the first one born. And Esau is the one that's kind of the man's man. He's the hunter. He, he's the one that every father's kind of proud of. And then Jacob is born trying, holding the heel of Esau, which is where he gets his name. Uh, you could translate it heel grabber, or actually the name means supplanter. Um, kind of the con artist. And if you read the story of Jacob and Esau, what you'll discover is Esau was born first, and he's supposed to get, he's supposed to get his rights as the, uh, as the, eldest son he gets a double portion of the inheritance but he's also supposed to get the blessing of the father and Esau is a man's man he's a man's man he's kind of hairy and gruff and he likes to hunt and Jacob hangs out with his mama a lot Jacob's a mama's boy and uh you read the story? He's laughing. Okay. He's read the story. Um, he's a mama's boy, but he's kind of a manipulative person. Um, as a matter of fact, he, uh, steals, he steals Esau's birthright. Esau goes out hunting and comes back and he says, I hadn't got nothing. I'm starving. 
And Esau and Jacob says, well, hey, I'll give you some of this porridge if you'll just give me your inheritance. He's so hungry, he says, sure. And he gives up his inheritance full of bowl of porridge. But he's hungry. You ever been out hunting and been hungry when you get through? Gnaw the horns off a goat? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can relate to Esau. Man, I'm hungry. And then as he gets older and, and, and Isaac is beginning to come towards the end of his life, his mother, Rachel, says, go get your daddy's blessing. And he sneaks in and he, and he kills a goat because his brother was hairy. And he puts the goat skin on his arm. And his father's almost blind and says, Dad, I've prepared something for you. Been out hunting because, you know, that's what Esau would have done. Been out hunting and, and Isaac says, well, you don't sound like Esau. So he leans forward and he wraps his arms around him and he feels the fur of the goat. And he ends up giving him his blessing. Stills his birthright, stills his blessing. And believe it or not, this upsets Esau just a little bit. Just a little bit. And Mama gets wind of it. And Mama hears about it. And what does Mama do? Sends him off to kinfolk. And he goes off to kinfolk. And when he gets off to kinfolk, he runs into his uncle, Uncle Laban. And Laban is such a fine, upstanding fellow. I'm just finding out who read the story. Laban is not a fine, upstanding fellow. He is kind of a con artist, too. And uh, anyhow, Jacob gets out there and he falls in love with the youngest daughter. Yeah, Rachel. And he says, Laban says, well, if you'll work for me for seven years, you can marry my daughter. Well, you know what happens. He works for him for seven years. And on the wedding night, his father-in-law pulls a fast one on him. Sends Leah into his tent. Well, evidently, Jacob's had a little bit too much wine see you shouldn't drink you should have known that and he spends the night with Leah and wakes up in the morning and goes uh oh this is not the one I wanted and so Laban turns around and says well if you work for me for seven more years well he does and he gets Leah and Rachel so he's got these two women but there's this battle that goes on between him and his father-in-law and they're constantly trying to outdo each other, trying to rip each other off. Now, let me ask you a question. Does Jacob sound like a guy that God would be rooting for? No! I don't even like him. I can relate to him, but I don't like him. Oh, and you're sitting here going, well, I can't relate to him. Yes, you can. How many of you have done the very best that you can do and said, God, I got it figured out. I'm going to get the job done one way or another. I'm going to accomplish this stuff. I'm going to do it. And Esau, I mean, let's be honest. When you look at the scripture, you look at the story, I'll be honest with you. Esau looks like a better guy than Jacob. But if you read in the book of Romans, what does the book of Romans say? If you read in the book of Romans, you'll see that it says, Jacob I loved, and Esau I hated. Come on, God, what's going on? Does anybody else feel that way? Let me ask you another question. <clears throat> Have you ever had the time in your life where you're trying to do what God wants you to do 
And it goes from bad to worse. Don't be looking at your spouse. I'm joking. The story is here that, that, that he's been with Laban and he's leaving Laban and he's gotten a bunch of goats and sheep and Laban has pursued him and not a real good relationship between him and Laban. Um, how many of y'all... How many of y'all remember those little trinkets we used to buy that said, may God watch between me and thee that when we are apart? Y'all remember those? You remember those? That was actually a reference to Laban and Jacob. And it was to make sure that you didn't rip each other off while y'all are apart. It's not the way we interpreted it, is it? God watch between us just so that they'll be safe and they'll come home and we'll love each other. No! It was basically make sure he doesn't do anything wrong. I make sure I don't do anything wrong so that we don't hurt each other anymore. Wow. (sighs) Jacob and Esau. Jacob is leaving. He's going home. Not a good time. He's got a bunch of cattle. Got a bunch of servants. He's got a lot of stuff. And he's headed home. In Genesis chapter 32, in verse 22, it says this. But during the night, he got up and took his two wives and his two maidservants and his 11 children and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He got them safely across the brook along with all his possessions. But Jacob stayed by by himself. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. And when the man saw that he couldn't get the best of Jacob as they wrestled, he deliberately threw Jacob's hip out of joint. The man said, let me go. It's daybreak. Jacob said, I'm not letting you go till you bless me. The man said, what's your name? He answered, Jacob. The man said, but no longer. Your name name is no longer Jacob. From now on, it's Israel, which means God wrestler. You've wrestled with God, and you've come through. Jacob asked, what's your name? The man said, why do you want to know my name? And then, right then and there, he blessed him. Jacob named the place Peniel. God's face, because he said, I saw God face to face and lived to tell the story. The sun came up as he left Peniel, limping because of his hip. This is why the Israelites to this day don't eat the hip muscle, because Jacob's hip was thrown out of joint. Do you ever have those moments? Things have gotten bad. <clears throat> You're in the midst of a battle. So what do you do? What do you do? Um, I'll be honest. I changed the channel on the radio. I changed what I'm watching on TV. Um, I pray more. I seek God more. And you know what's funny? It doesn't get better. Uh Uh-oh. People getting uncomfortable? Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't change the channel on the TV. I'm not saying you shouldn't. 
change the radio station. I'm not saying you shouldn't pray more. I'm not saying that. But I think what's happening is that we're more interested in getting what we want than getting what we need. See, what do we need? They've done studies with children. Um, uh, I heard one guy say, you know what a father's number one responsibility, his number one job description is? Wrestler. You know that? That fathers that wrestle with their children have children that have better developed self-esteem and ability to cope with the world. That's pretty cool. How many of you remember wrestling with your dad? Anybody remember? Did you ever wrestle with your dad? You wrestled with your dad. You wrestled with your dad. I didn't wrestle with my dad a whole lot. I did wrestle with my brother. And he was at least twice my size. But I wrestled some in high school. Anybody here ever wrestle in high school? You wrestled in high school. Did you have a good record? No, okay. I was going to come up here and let you explain how to do this. Uh, you know what? I, if you've ever wrestled somebody, you get to know them pretty well. Wrestling is really about how to get that person to submit. Did you know that? The whole point of wrestling is to get somebody pinned. Right? Now, now I, I'm not, I, I was listening to Paul Harvey. I'll just share this with you. Uh, there's a couple, uh, the Lusk couple, that every Thursday would unplug the telephone, close the shades, and watch professional wrestling every afternoon. And oh, not every afternoon, every Thursday afternoon, they would watch wrestling. And anyhow, about halfway through the wrestling session, she would get a step over toe hold on him and the wrestling would begin. And the truth is, is that she would usually win. But that's because she was 76 and he was 82. They said, those, those soap operas on TV are fake, but the wrestling is real. You ever wrestle? And you know what? Any of you here married? You ever wrestle? You ever wrestle? Now, I'm not talking about getting her in a hip lock. I'm talking about wrestling. You ever get in an argument with your spouse? No. What is it about wrestling? What is it about wrestling? You know, a lot of people come to church, and I, I, I'm sure some of you came to church because you're wanting the preacher to tell you what to think and what to do. I got bad news for you. I ain't. What I am going to tell you. Wrestle with God. Wrestle with God. Wrestle with him. Because guess what? He's going to wrestle with you. I imagine poor Jacob was sitting there. He done kicked out his wife. Got rid of his maidservants, and he's sitting there, probably reading the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because understand, he's getting ready to face his brother. His brother hates him. He has every right to hate him. He's stolen, ripped off. He's conned his brother out of everything, and he's headed that direction. 
And he's doing everything he can to try and fix the problem. He sent his servants and his sheep and his goats on to his brother. Trying to make it like it's a gift. He's trying to make the situation better. And can you feel his anxiety? Because the news has come, Esau's there with 400 men. All he's got servants, wives, goats. And he's getting ready to face his brother. He's at the end of his rope. You ever been there? He's in his wives and his maidservants. And he's sitting there and he's probably doing the 23rd Psalm. Not that he had it. I know, you Bible scholars. Well, David hadn't even showed up. He's doing the 23rd Psalms before David did. Because that's what I would do. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And, and he might even turn on those late night television preachers. That name it, claim it group. If you just name it, God will give it to you. Boy, you sit and listen to those guys and you're going, man, that'd be cool if it worked that way. You, you sit there and you listen to them and you think, man, am I even really saved? I imagine he got to that part. He's singing, I come to the garden alone. And then, pow! Guy hits him from the side, knocks him to the ground. A J-Buck. And they wrestle. And they wrestle. And they wrestle. And they wrestle. And guess what? The day is coming. And the man that Jacob is wrestling with, Jacob won't let him go. And the scripture says that he hit his hip and threw his hip out of joint. And he wouldn't let him go. He says, I've got to go. I'm not letting go until you bless me. And so the guy blesses him, right? Gives him what he wants. Gives him everything he needs. Everything's easy. Everything's a piece of cake to him. No. No. He says, what's your name? What's your name? And my name's Jacob. What's in a name? It sums up who he is. I'm a man who fought to be first, but ended up being second when it came to birth. But that didn't stop me. I figured out a way to get my daddy's blessing. I got figured out a way to steal his birthright. I've spent 20 years with my uncle Laban and I've ripped him off just as much as he's ripped me off. I've lived up to my name. I'm a cheat. I'm a scam artist. I'm a mess. What was his blessing? Changed his name. Changed his name. What's in a name? That was your name. But your name is now Israel. A man. Who wrestles with God. Wow. Maybe you're here and you're in the midst of a battle. And you might have come to church thinking, oh, I'm going to get the answer that I need. 
That preacher's going to say something that's going to change everything. Make everything better. And you're sitting here right now going, what a disappointment. You may be here. And you've done it yourself. Your whole life, you have struggled, you have fought, you have lied, you have cheated. You've pushed and you've striven. And you've reached the end. And your question is, God, why? 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 Maybe you're in a situation because you deserve it. Just like Jacob. Maybe you're in a situation and you didn't deserve it. Just like Jesus. Do you want to read the Bible? The Bible is filled with people that wrestled with God. There's not a single person in Scripture that did not wrestle with God. You will never find a person of faith that is worth a dime that has not wrestled with God. We are called... Israel, you may be in the midst of a battle. Wrestle with God. Don't be afraid. Because I do remember wrestling with my dad. And you know what? I remember my dad, us wrestling. And we wrestled a little bit, and he let me win. And you know what, my dad? I said, Dad, you're not doing your best. You're not doing your best, Dad. Come on, Dad. He said, you don't think I'm doing my best, boy? And you know what he did? That's when he would grab me, throw me on the ground, and he'd cover me with kisses. Let me know I was loved. He let me know I was loved. And let me tell you something, when you wrestle with God at the end of it, you know what you're going to discover? You're loved. You're loved. You're loved. And He loves you not because you're good. He loves you because He is good. And you know what? He will bring you that, to that point where you realize, I can't fix it. I can't make it perfect. I can't make the problems disappear. But he's going to give you a blessing. And you know what that blessing is? Not that the problems disappear. But that he is with you. I remember my wife being so sick. She couldn't keep anything down. Nothing. Not for a day or two, but for weeks and weeks. Couldn't keep anything down. She was sick, battling cancer. I never will forget what she said to me. She said, I wasn't afraid. I was miserable, but I wasn't afraid. Because I felt God with me in that moment like I never felt Him before. So if you're in a battle, and at your wit's end place to be 
Because Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Church is a hospital, folks. Guess what? We're all sick. We're all broken. We're all a mess. Guess what? The world says your name is Jacob. But you know what God says? Your name is Israel. You wrestled with God. And you didn't give up. If you're counting on your ability, give it up. If you've reached that point where everything facing you looks overwhelming, give it up. Go wrestle with your daddy. Go wrestle with him. Talk to him. Let him tell you what you need to hear. Because he loves you. You know what's amazing at the end of the story? Not the end of the story. The story's still going on. But you know what? When he met Esau, do you know what happened? Did they, Esau ball up his fist? Say, all right, come on. Let's settle this once and for all. No. Scripture says that when Esau saw him, Jacob bowed before Esau seven times. And Esau fell on his neck and wrapped him in his arms and covered him with kisses. Now, what does that story sound like in the New Testament? It sounds like the story of the prodigal son. Because what did the father do? All right, boy, you blew it. That's it. It's over. No. That father ran down. He threw his arms around his son and he covered him with kisses. You are loved. And sometimes God allows the battles into your life to bring you to the end of yourself so he can show you what's most important. Not what you get. It's not even answers. It's the answer, which is God, your daddy, who loves you so. Let's pray. Father, help us. And for Father, for those that are in the midst of a battle, and it seems so overwhelming. Lord, there are some here who need to wrestle. They got problems in their life that, that we can't answer. They can't answer. No man can answer. Father, they got struggles and trials that they are going to discover what they need is not answers or stuff. What they need Father, there are those that are in a battle and have reached the end. And Lord, they just need to be covered with your kisses. To just be reminded that they are not alone in the battle. That you've changed their name. That it's not their battle, but your battle. And you are always victorious. Help us, help us to trust you more, to love you more, to feel your kisses in our battle. Father, we pray this in the name of Jesus. God's people said, now, you want to go bless somebody? 
can I tell you something? If you're in the midst of a battle, one of the best ways to deal with the battle, find a way to be a blessing. It really makes a difference. We're going to stand and we're going to sing our closing anthem. And then I want to invite you to come over to the uh, fellowship hall. We're going to pack those backpack blessings. But may God be with you. May you be blessed. May you abide in the midst of his arms. May you feel his kisses falling upon your neck as you journey today. God bless you. Join us.